Good morning and welcome. My name is Reverend Gilbraham Jr. and I'm one of the associate ministers here at Ebenezer Baptist Church. And once again, it is my pleasure to welcome you to our online worship experience. I have the pleasure of introducing our pastor, Pastor Gilbert S. Ham Sr. He's going to be sharing the message this morning, when you care enough to give your best. I know you're going to enjoy the message, so you want to go ahead and grab a friend, grab a co-worker, and let them know that the Word of God is about to be preached. You know what time it is. Let's go.
Jr. to our chairman, Deacon Marion Brown, chairman, trustee, chairman, and queen, to our official staff, to Mrs. Ham, and to the Ebenezer Baptist Church family. To those of you who can, will you please stand for the reading of God's word. I invite your prayer for meditation to the gospel according to Mark, chapter 12, verses 41 through 44. Mark chapter 12, verses 41 through 44. If you have it, say amen. Amen. And Jesus set over against the treasury and beheld how the people cast money into the treasury. And many that were rich cast in much. And there came a certain poor widow, and she threw in two mites, which made a farthing. And he called unto his disciples, and said unto them, Verily or truly, I say unto you, that this poor widow hath cast more in than all they which have cast into the treasury. For all they did cast in of their abundance. But she of her want did cast in all that she had, even all her living. You may be seated. Father, bless your word as it goes forth and give us ears to hear. For I ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. For just a little while, I would like to preach on this subject. When you care enough to give your all, When you care enough to give your all. It had been a draining afternoon in the temple for Jesus. The guardians of the religious status quo represented by the scribes, Pharisees, and Sadducees, were becoming more and more vocal and aggressive in their opposition to the teachings and ministry of Jesus. Our Lord, knowing that his time on earth was quickly coming to a close, and realizing that there was still too much to do and say, had increased the denunciations of those who opposed his gospel. All of the niceties of polite debate and disagreement were gone, and their mutual disdain for what the other represented was evident for all to see. Now, despite this tension between the master and the hierarchy of Judaism, despite his disagreement with much of what went on in the temple, Jesus continued to go. He did not let disagreeable personality and conflict stop him from worshiping or serving God in the place that had been set aside as God's house. At this point in his ministry, it would have been easier for him to divorce himself from the temple 
and his traditions and take his message to the fields along the shores and in the villages and hamlets outside Jerusalem. Whenever he went to worship, there were always those who were waiting to find fault and trap him in his words. They watched everything he did and listened to everything he said, not so they could be helped thereby, but so they could criticize. Nevertheless, Jesus went to the temple because he was determined that nothing and nobody would interfere with his worship of God. And let me tell you, my brothers and sisters, don't you let people stop you from coming to church to worship God. Amen. Now, on this particular day, while in the temple, the Pharisees had tried to trap him with a question about paying taxes. The Sadducees had tested him with a question about the resurrection. And a scribe had asked him about the first commandment. After answering them all, Jesus had warned the people about vain displays of piety and about scrambling for positions and places of honor in the synagogue. Now, as he was on his way out of the temple, he stopped in the area opposite the treasury. In the temple between the court of the Gentile and the court of women was the gate beautiful. Jesus may have paused there to reflect and to be quiet after the afternoon's confrontations, uh, discussions, and tensions. Listen, all of us have had periods of difficulty and dis and discouragement, frustration, and depression. I said all of us have had periods of difficulty and discouragement, frustration, and depression. And sometimes when we have been most deeply engrossed in a particular circumstance, it seems as if from out of the blue, from a completely different source, God sends some good news or we will hear from someone special, or we see something that brightens our days, lifts our spirits, and refreshes and inspires us to go on. Sometimes that special word or incident isn't much, but it's just what we need at the moment to give us that little extra push to go on by faith. Now, as Jesus sat opposite the treasury that day, he had the same kind of experience. Now, in the court of women were 13 trumpet-shaped collection receptacles into which people cast their offerings after they had made their primary sacrifice to the temple. After they had paid their tithe, their sacred and holy tent of their income unto the Lord. Now each of these offerings was for a special purpose, such as the purchase, purchase of corn, oil or wine for sacrifices, temple administration and maintenance, and perhaps another for the poor. Whenever a contribution 
was thrown into one of these trumpets. The clanging sound of metal, hitting metal was heard. The large, the larger the coins and the offering, the louder the clang. Some people contributed generously to these astral offerings, and the trumpets announced their contribution with the appropriate ring. Now, as Jesus said opposite these receptacles, he took note of how people were making their contributions. Some hurriedly walked by and threw something in as a matter, as a matter of habit, without giving much thought to the purpose for which they were giving. Others stopped to pick out all of their small change and gave that. Others stopped to read each trumpet carefully and then decide where to give. Some who were taking the most time to carefully scrutinize the receptacles were giving some of the smallest amounts. There were those who looked for their favorite collection basket because they always contributed to the same thing over and over again and not to others. There were those who would contribute generously and pause long enough to hear the trumpets clang loudly and then look around to see if others were looking at them with admiration and envy. It was obvious that these people came because they enjoyed hearing the trumpets clang and the attention and respect they received. Now, in the midst of all of this activity, Jesus noticed a certain woman timidly approaching the collection receptacle. She was not particularly good-looking or well-dressed. There was nothing particularly striking about her. She was just an ordinary woman who could easily become lost in the crowd or walk into a room and not even be noticed. As a matter of fact, the other worshipers, the priests, the Pharisees, and the scribes walked past her without even noticing her. It took somebody like Jesus to recognize that she was there. She could have easily gone out of the temple that day, as she had done so many times before, without being noticed. Jesus, however, was there that day, and he took notice of her. I doubt if the high priest or members of the Sanhedrin knew her name, but Jesus noticed that she was then. Listen, sometimes we come to church and we wonder if anybody takes notice of us. We stop in the back or go quietly to our favorite spot or seat. Our names never get called from the pulpit. And we are hardly ever asked to do anything that receives attention. Sometimes people seem to look through us as if we didn't exist. We wonder if anybody knows that we are around. The word that comes to us from the scripture 
because she had given her all. Now, on the other hand, she had more than the others, for she had the joy and peace that only those who give their all can have and know. She had more than the rest because she had the appreciation of a Savior who recognized that she had given her all. She had her devotion to a God who would take care of her every need because she dared to love God enough and trust God and his word enough to give her all. Now, before she could give her all in terms of money, her heart and her life first had to be given to God. Let me just pause here for a moment. God is only asking his people to support his church. Did you hear that? I said only God. God is only asking his people to support uh -huh, his church. He's not asking the unbeliever. No, no. He's asking his people yeah. to support his church. Before, as a force, she could give her all in terms of money, her heart and her life first had to be given to God. Some define giving in very narrow terms or in terms of money only. They act as if they can buy their way to heaven. They believe that their stewardship should begin and end with their offering. And that, oh, and that after they have given their offering or their time, they have given all. Oh, they know nothing about rendering service or using their talents because giving for them is a matter, is a matter of dollars and cents. Others believe that giving consists only of rendering their time and talents in the service of the Lord. They will allow the offering plate to pass them by because they feel they are giving another way. Through their time, their talent, and their service. However, to give time and talent without money is not complete stewardship either. Especially when God blesses them with all three. Amen. Jesus was right. Where our treasures are, so will our hearts be also. Matthew chapter 6 and verse 21. Listen, as long as we hold our treasures to ourselves, our stewardship is not complete because we are still holding back a part of what we have from God. As long as we hold our treasures in ourselves, we have not given all to God. It's just as one-sided to give service without money as it is to give money without service. Thus, when we 
talk about tithing, we are not talking simply about giving a tenth of our money, but also a tenth of our time and a tenth of our talent as well. It's all right to put an envelope in the plate yeah. on Sunday morning. Amen. But a gift without the giver is bad. Yeah. How much of our heart and how much of our lives have we given to God? Yeah. How much of our time and how much of our treasure is God getting? Are any church ministries getting any of our time and talents? That's how we tie time and talent. If we work with young people on the job, what about doing some work with the young people in our church? That's how we tie time and talent. When we bring the skills of our job and the training with which God has blessed us to our church, we tie time and talent. If we have skills in working with the needy, what about working with them through the missionary society? That's how we tie time and talent. If we are retired or at home with nothing to do but feel sorry for ourselves or get on the phone and gossip, how about devoting a few hours each week to evangelize? That's tiding time and time. Listen, it might help some of us to get out of the house rather than saying, shut in doors and building mental mountains out of physical molehills. Now, now the widow gave all. Yes. Say the widow gave all. Yes. The widow gave all and in doing so she blessed Jesus' spirit. As he sat there after a long, draining day of dialogue and debate with the Pharisees and scribes, he saw the shadow gifts of some and the partial gifts of others. His spirit was revived when he saw somebody giving all. For he knew that soon he would have to give his all as well. So far, he had been giving his best. Mm -hmm. He had given his best uh, fellowship to the disciples uh, and his best patience uh, to his enemies. Uh, he had uh, given his best uh, healing to the sick uh, and his best teaching uh, to the masses. He knew, however, that to truly redeem a sinful world, he would have to do more than give his best. He would have to give his all. He would have to be betrayed and denied by his own, deserted by his friends and lied about by his enemies. He would have to be crowned with a crown of thorns and receive undeserved strength on his back. He would have to take an old rugged cross on his shoulders and bear it to a lonely hill called Calvary and there between a weak and glory and a wicked world he would have to give his 
is all his very life oh lord and as he stood at the treasury that day watching the partial gifts of people maybe he asked himself why he should give his all when so many of those for whom he was sacrificing were giving less but along came a poor widow who cast into the treasury all she had and lifted his spirit to know that there was some who were willing to give their all oh lord just as he was prepared to do listen sometimes when we get discouraged it helps all of us to know that there is somebody who loves and knows God like we do and who is he to say that on that night when all the disciples deserted him when he knew yeah that he could have kept he could have called ten thousand angels to destroy the world and set him free maybe one of the memory that encouraged his heart and comforted him in his suffering was the fault of little woman who also gave all she had. Oh Lord, it was in giving her all that she blessed the Lord. And don't you know this morning it was by Jesus giving his all that we had been blessed. I said it was by Jesus giving his all that we have been blessed. The apostle Paul said that Jesus became poor that we might be made rich. He gave up the celestial height of glory. He gave up the majestic of the royal diadem. He gave up the music of the angelic heart. He gave up the adoration of the heavenly host and became a poor baby born in a manger and wrapped in swaddling clothes. He gave it all up so that we could become rich in salvation. He gave it all up so that we could become rich in eternal life. He gave it all up. He gave it all up so that we could become rich in faith, rich in hope. He gave it all up so that we could become rich in love, rich in joy. He gave it all up so that we could become rich in kindness, rich in patience. He gave it all up so that we could become rich in gentleness, rich in power. He gave it all up so that we could become, oh Lord, rich in good works. Yeah, it is only when we give all that we truly bless others and know the joy that comes from giving all. As the hymn says, you have long for sweet deeds and for faith to increase and have earnestly fervently prayed, but you cannot have the rest or be perfectly blessed. Yeah, until on the altar his name is laid. When you walk with the Lord in the light of his word and have peace and contentment all the way, you must do his sweet will to be free from all ill. On the altar your all you must lay is your all on the altar of sacrifice laid your heart the spirit come 
household. You can only be blessed and have peace and see the rest as you yield in your body and soul. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, you can only be blessed and have peace and see the rest as you yield in your body and soul. And I want to tell you, it would be if you want to be blessed, yield him your body and soul. If you want to have peace, yield him your body and soul. If you want to have sweet rest, yield him. You him your body and soul. If you want to have joy, I said if you want to have joy, you him your body and soul. Yes, Jesus gave it all. Jesus gave it all. He gave his life. He gave his life. Do you care? Enough to give him your all. Yeah. Oh Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for giving your all. Thank you, Jesus. For giving your all. Thank you, Lord. And your all was that you gave. Thank you for all that you've already done for us. In the name of Jesus. Father, we 
we ask you to forgive us of all sin and unrighteousness. In the mighty name of Jesus, hallelujah, glory to God. Yes. Father God, we want to thank you this morning because you did give your all for us. Yeah. Yeah. And we thank you, God, for giving thank your all. You. you gave everything, yes. oh God. Yes. You gave your all, God. You gave your life, oh God. In the name of Jesus, you gave your life that we might live, oh God. In the name of Jesus. Yes, God, you became poor that we become rich, oh God. We thank you, God, that you became homeless that we might have a home, oh God. Jesus. Oh God, and we pray, oh God, for the Ellis family. 
Israel, oh God. The first Pentecostal Baptist church who lost their pastor, oh God. Yes. In the name of Jesus, another soul going on home, oh God. And we thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Oh my God, for another and the bird, oh God. I never, oh God. You came and she's going on home, oh God. We thank you, Lord, because one day you're going to come back and get us, oh God. And we just want to be ready. Welcome back. I know you were encouraged by that word. And if you were encouraged, we just simply ask that you just leave us a comment and let us know how the word of God has impacted your life. It certainly would mean a lie to us. I'd like to take this opportunity to lead you to Christ if you've never accepted Christ as your personal savior. Say this prayer with me. Dear Lord Jesus, I recognize that I'm a sinner and I am in need of a savior. I'm asking you to save me. Please forgive me of all of my sins. I believe that your father sent you to die for my sins, to die on the cross. And I believe you died on the cross, shed your blood, but on the third day you rose with all power in your hand. And I ask you to come into my life and save me. If you said that prayer, then the Bible lets us know that you are saved. But Acts 16, 31 says, And believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved in thy house. And if you said that prayer, why don't you just send us a message and let us know so that we can celebrate with you. Simply go to our website at www.ebcwilmington.org. And on the contact page, just leave us your information so that we can stay in contact with you. But more importantly, so that we can send you resources to help you grow in your faith with God. We also encourage you to get connected to a Bible preaching and Bible believing church. So this will also aid in your growth and your faith. Stay connected with us on social media. We're on Facebook at EBC Wilmington. I want you to go ahead and just click that follow button. We're also on YouTube at Ebenezer Baptist Church of Wilmington, Delaware. And I want you to go ahead and click that subscribe button as well as the notification button so that you're constantly alerted each time we upload content. So once again, we want to thank you for being a part of our worship experience. If you're ever in the area, we invite you to come and worship with us. We're at 2200 North Playmine Street here in Wilmington, Delaware. And we've taken every precaution to make sure that your worship experience is a safe experience. So on behalf of Pastor Ham, the official staff, family and friends of Ebenezer Baptist Church, we want to say thank you. Until next time, take care, stay safe, and God bless.